So we're going to do a little bit of practice uh, with functions and I'm also going to go into what is known as a return statement. So I'll start by essentially reminding you guys of how uh, functions are basically made up. So there's two ways really. So we've got the function name plus parenthesis. So this is for a function that doesn't have any argument. So let's say for example the function's called function, it would just be function with parentheses, yeah? So function name with parentheses. Yep. The other way that functions can be made is function name with their parentheses. Oops. Parentheses. with an argument inside the parenthesis. So this could be something like function argument. Okay, and if you see inside of that function, there is an argument. Print is an example of a function argument statement. Okay, so uh, functions. Are. So let's go into defining a couple of functions. We'll first define one that doesn't have an argument. So we'll define a function called uh, fun. Okay, doesn't really matter very much what it does. Doesn't concern me. It'll just print um, just absolutely useless, useless information essentially. Yeah. All this demonstrates is that we can define a function. We can define a function that has no argument. So we'll just type that in to make sure that it's compiled properly. And we'll use the argument and we'll hope that it works. And it has worked. So there's fun. And it's printed out exactly what it's supposed to. Now let's define another argument and we'll call it fun2. And this should take an argument. So we'll take the name argument and we'll print your name is name. Now we'll uh, actually use a name so we'll use the name uh, Johnny okay and it should print out your name is Johnny okay that's really really cool um, but let's say that I want to uh, I don't know make get a variable and I want to make it equivalent to the output of a function so let's try function 2 now you would think that function 2 with the name Johnny would probably give us uh, the, the, ver the string value your name is Johnny, right? Well, well, it's certainly shown as your name is Johnny. Let's go see what the value of der is. What? That can't be right. Nothing's happening. So, the reason why nothing's happening is because der has no value. So when you use a print statement or the function print, it doesn't actually give you, so you see this string here, it doesn't actually give you a usable form of the string or the item that it's printed. So it doesn't give you a usable form of the argument. It just shows the argument in this Python console or the screen, depending on what kind of IDE or Python tool you're using. But you can't actually use this as a variable or anything else like that. But let's say that we did want a variable, you know, we wanted a string of some kind, yeah? Well, there is a way to get that. So we'll make a new uh, function called fun3. We'll have name, age, and... Now, we'll just have name and age for now. And we shall put a string called str 
i1 string 1 and we'll say that that string 1 is equivalent to your name is plus name obviously and you are plus age years old now what we can do in order to get this string value and use it as an output or get this string value as an output not sure how that happened there just undo that is we can return stri1 yeah we can return that value here and when i use fun free use a name so we'll say the name is Daniel I could actually you see this age here I could actually turn it into a string because most people will probably enter that as an integer or a float so sorry I'll start that again so we'll use fun free here and we'll give the name as Maria Maria Ram no no, no setting name um, we'll say she's 33 and a half years of age, right? Well, you see uh, here how it says out, yeah? This in and out, the in means input and the out means output. And if you actually look where I printed, there's no output. It's just shown me duh, rah, rah, duh, blah, 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 etc. In the screen but it's actually given this string your name is Maria and you are 33.5 years old here as an output so if I use this variable and I assign this function to it that variable should now have a value a string that's equal to this and it does so essentially what return does is it returns something to you in a usable form okay so if you've got some kind of console it'll output it and it'll show you the output in a similar way to print but print statements what, what comes out of a print statement isn't usable in any any other sense than you can see it but you can't assign you know assign it to a variable or anything Whereas with the return statements, you know, you could, or it might return like a value. You might ask a question and it might be, be able to return a boolean. So you might be able to ask a question, is X or Y true? Is seven plus five true? And if it is, it'll return that it's true. If it isn't, it'll return that it's false. So is seven plus five, 12, for example, would return true here. Yeah. If, if you made a function of that way. We can also make math mathematical functions in this sense. So fun for, we'll say num1, num2. Well, actually, actually, we'll call this something else. We'll call this sum underscore num. Yeah, just so that the name has some kind of meaning and some kind of relation to what the function does. And we'll say that num3 is equal to num1 plus num2. We'll put floats of that because people might actually input these as strings or they may input them as integers. But I would rather we had them as float and we can return num3. Okay. So if we add 5 plus 5, we should get 10. But let's add 5 plus 10, and we should get 15. So sum underscore num 5, 10. And this should now sum them up, and it should give me 15. It's given me 15 point hour. Why is that? Well, it's turned these two numbers into float. So it's actually returned the float rather than an integer value. And if I now make a new variable called my num, and I make it equal to that, my num now holds that value. 
So really return f functions with uh, return statements in them are just useful so that you can return a value uh, from a statement. You may, for example, let's say we have num1 and num2 here. You may put number one and number two through many, many different you know kind of kind of rigorous tests you may for example decide num3 is also equal to num3 times 7 num3 is now equal to num3 minus 9 num3 is equal to num3 minus num1 and now this is a much more complicated mathematical uh, calculation. And so if you wanted to make a really complex mathematical calculation that may be maybe 30 or 40 lines based on two numbers, and you wanted to you know, use this kind of calculation with many, many sets of two numbers, you could very easily do that. And it would simplify the process because instead of me now having to write out this for every single you know, individual variable that I want to do. All I need to do is write down the two variables in here in this sum number parenthesis, and it'll return the number I need. Okay, I'll get rid of all this because this isn't really the sum, but that was just really to just to demonstrate to you kind of uh, the the use for that sort of return statement, really. So, what else can we do with these numbers? Let's say, uh, let's say I want to have maybe a generate statement, right? And what it generates is maybe maybe it prints out something and it returns something. So, generate, and we give an age. And the print statement is, you look handsome for a plus age, year old. And then it actually stores a variable called person age this person is plus age actually I need to convert that to string why do I keep forgetting that eh? I'm just slipping up Anna just totally slipping up eh? and then we return person age for example okay um i don't understand why that is at all it's not at all ah oh, yeah it totally is invalid syntax what the hell am i doing there generate age so let's use this generate statement with an age Let's say the age is 93. Okay, now let's say the uh, the variable Darwin's age is equal to this. Okay. Oop. Now, let's say that I'm Darwin and I'm registering, uh, I don't know, I'm registering for insurance or... Whatever thing, okay? Could, could be absolutely anything I'm registering for. And the computer asked me for my age, yeah? Maybe I'd get offended if I'm quite an old person. Maybe uh, maybe the company wants to just say something nice about the client, but also get useful information. So what they've done on the computer screen, they've made this program, this generate program, and that one's entered his age as 93 in the using the generate function. And the computer said to him, you look handsome for a 93-year-old. Oh, thank you, thinking, oh, what a, what a nice thing to say. What a nice gesture this company has given us, okay? 
But the other thing that's happened as a result of this is if we look at Darwin's age, Darwin's age, it actually holds a string. This person is 93. So we, 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 we now know how old they are. Now, I could have, or I should have really stored that as an int, just put in 93. But now I specifically know that they're 93. Uh, it could be misleading information if not used correctly, but let's just assume it will be used correctly. So what do I mean by that? Well, there could be the 93rd person in line. Um, there could be 93 days. Or we don't know 93 what, but it doesn't really matter. It's just a simple problem. And now there's something else I need to show you about return. Return is something you have to use as the very last statement uh, in your in your function. So let's say, um, oh, I better actually use a value. So let's say the value is just num1. And we'll say num2 is equal to num1 uh, times num1 times num1. So basically, num1 to the power of 3 is num2. And then we return num2. And then let's say we want to print after it. We want to print hello world. What do you think will happen when we use this function? I already know what will happen, but... Uh, I want you to guess what will happen if we use this function. So gen 2, and we'll just use the number 33. No big deal. No big deal at all. It prints, it, it, uses, it shows you the output, which is 35,937, so it returns the output. But where's my hello world statement? You know, I don't see that being printed. So what happens when you put return statement is once this line, this return line executes, uh, the function terminates. So anything beyond this return line within this function, it will not be received uh, as a line of code. It won't be read as code. It's just completely ignored because the function ends after the returns after the line that the return statement's on. So once it's returned, once a function's returned, what it's been told to return. Anything beyond that return statement is null and void and is not read by the machine. So that's something to watch out for there. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you learned a little bit about return statements and functions from that practice. Um, I'll do one more practice because these are, you know, quite difficult things. You don't have to watch it. It may not help you too. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed it all the same anyway.